minus 30 seconds. This launch is going to be breaking records. Our satellites that we're putting on there will become the largest constellation of satellites ever launched in human history. Minus 30 seconds. Two times we've put our satellites on the rocket and they didn't make it into space because the launch vehicle failed. 15 seconds. We've been ready for a couple of years to image the whole world every day. This launch will get us to mission one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, this is a dove. It has one job, to take pictures of the planet and send them back home. And this is home, the headquarters of Planet. Hello. Hey Ashley, how are you? Good, man. Nice to see you. Welcome to Planet. When I first met Will Marshall, he and his friends were building tiny satellites in their garage with a single interstellar dream. You know, the Apollo pictures of the Earth from the moon were seen as a bit of a phase change in human consciousness because suddenly people became more aware that we were sitting on this fragile planet. This next phase change is going from the Earth as this static image that we think about to having it be this dynamic place that it really is. Every time we get down a new picture, the Earth has changed. A tree has gone down, a river moved, a field was harvested, a road surface changed. How can we make decisions about the planet without having that information? Planet's been taking pictures from space for a few years, but their dream hasn't come true yet. To get their daily update, they need one last ride to launch the largest satellite constellation in human history. The first step is to stuff as many doves as they can into the nose cone of a rocket. The rocket will take off and head toward low Earth orbit. Once it arrives, the satellites are spit out into space. Over time, the doves will use their solar panels like wings to glide in the thin atmosphere about 300 miles above the Earth's surface and spread out in a ring. So it's almost like a, a string of pearls of these satellites that are going around the Earth. And the Earth rotates underneath it. And then if you just look at it looking down, it looks like a line scanner. So this has been our North Star for the company for the last five years, and it's just about to happen. I think we're in the beginnings of thinking of new architectures in space, and we're going to actually just see our Earth like expand a bit more. That local space is going to be something that feels not so unattainable. To attain the unattainable, Planets reinvented the way satellites are made. Traditional satellites take years to build inside giant warehouses. Planet pops them out in a few days in a miniature factory in the middle of a city. To run it, they hired a tech guru who used to build laptops and tablets. Traditional satellites are massive. Some of them are as big as a bus. People were building 100 million, 200 million, 300 million dollar satellites. Most of the commercially off-the-shelf parts can be used for satellite. So that's what we started, and then we wanted to really focus on the performance per millimeter cube, and we nailed it. We process two million square kilometers of data every day, per satellite basis. That's an area the size of Mexico for each tiny satellite. And they have dozens upon dozens of them circling the Earth, beaming down terabytes of data every day. And because they build them from smartphone stuff, they're wildly cheaper than satellites used by Google or the CIA that take months or years to scan the planet. That's made them the poster boys for something that's happening here in Silicon Valley and around the world, a new crop of companies that are chasing Elon Musk into orbit. They're supported by space nerds like Steve Jurvetson, a venture capitalist who happens to own a space museum as well as early stakes in SpaceX and Planet. How would you describe new space? 
Better than Old Space. Better than New Coke. It's like, you know, Apple versus IBM and the computing. The new wave of companies that are doing things differently, more software centric, and just build with whatever you can buy that you put into an iPhone uh, and you can buy off the shelf. If launch is super expensive and no one even knows what the price is, and it's mainly government smoky rooms that this gets negotiated, well, only, you know, governments, weirdos, and people who think they're governments, you know, launch rockets. And that pretty much describes the space, you know, 20 years ago. Planet's co founders came out of that world of weirdos. They were part of a new generation of free thinkers, trained at NASA's Silicon Valley Research Center in the twilight of Reagan-era efforts to shoot lasers and ballistic missiles into orbit. But you guys were like space hippies. We were space hippies, <laughs> yeah. While other people are, are looking to re-weaponize space again, you, right. you were trying to what? Well, we were trying to campaign against that. We don't think it makes sense for nations to put weapons in space. It sort of fundamentally conflicts with our vision for how space should be used to help humanity and that we shouldn't be taking our, our baggage of warfare into our next destination. Their speedy updates have attracted farmers, insurance companies, do-gooder nonprofits, governments, and inevitably, more than a few spooks. They want to see how their neighbors' crops are doing, check on damage from a flood, count cars in parking lots or ships at port, and track the movements of terrorists. But if you TiVo the entire planet every day, it's a drag to binge watch. Pretty pictures are nice for a lot of people, but they're not enough. Developments in recent years in machine learning have been tremendous, and they've been particularly tremendous in where you, one has deep stacks of imagery. Well, that's exactly what we have. So you could train algorithms on all of this to extract information from that imagery in an automated way to answer people's more direct questions. So you guys start as space hippies. If you think about this for just a second, there is kind of a surveillance aspect. At this resolution, at three to five meters, you can see a tree and a vehicle or a road, but you can't see a person. It's not that there's zero ways in which this can do harm, of course, and it's more about scanning the whole planet than it is about you know, zooming in on something in particular, and that's, that's important from us from a philosophical standpoint. People want to put a lot of satellites in orbit, um, a lot, and there's a lot more to come. Like, we're just beginning to see it. In 2015, private investment into private space companies exceeded all prior years times two. Don't take it the wrong way, but you're kind of like uh, launch vagabonds. Launch is the largest barrier to innovation in space. There's like 90 launches that happen a year globally. All the militaries, all the governments, all the commercial companies around the world, we've kind of hacked it to get into space. And over the last four years, we've been on the launch pad 15 different times. American companies, SpaceX, we have lift off of the, the Orbital Sciences Antares rocket. Antares is on its way. Lift off. We've been on ULA's rocket. On the shoulders of Atlas. We've been on a Japanese rocket. Yes, boss. We've been on two different types of Russian rockets. And now going up again for the second time on an Indian rocket. Well, in that case, there's only one thing to do. If you're sending rockets up, it helps to be in the middle of nowhere in case something goes wrong. Out here, you've got nothing but salt flats. Once we get to the end of the road, it's going to be jungle and machines. India's spaceport is on a small island off the southeast coast of the country, in the middle of a bird sanctuary, surrounded by not much else other than farms and fishermen. So around here, rockets are pretty much the biggest show in town. The Indian Space Research Organization is all set to create a new world record. So Russia held the previous record by launching 37 satellites in 2014. It's quite a sizable jump from that Russian number. 
సోమవారి పాదాల చెంత ఉంచి ప్రత్యేక పూజలు నిర్వహించిన అనంతరం ఆలయ అధికారులు ఇస్రో శాస్త్రవేత్తలకు యాదాద్రిస్తారు వచ్చిన అందజేసి రేపు షారు ప్రయోగించనున్న పిఎస్ఎల్వీసి ముప్పై ఏడు ప్రయోగం విజయవంతం కావాలంటూ రాష్ట్ర వ్యాప్తంగా విద్యార్థులు Of late, ISRO's carved out a niche as a reliable ride to space at a bargain. It's because they get their pick of ambitious, brainy and cheap engineers who want their shot at space, just like Karthik, planet's head of tech. When I was in ISRO, they were following other countries. And now, in the last 15 years, they've gone a long way. With each launch, we have some excess capacity available and this excess capacity is being effectively utilized by the small satellite manufacturers. One company wants to have a 200 satellite constellation, another 400 and they are even talking of 1400 satellite constellation. We are trying to maximize our returns by taking in many of these small satellites. Hi. How does your price for commercial launches compare to SpaceX? If somebody is seeking you, probably you are more uh, cost competitive than others. This veritable workhorse of ISRO has now made 37 continuous successful flights, including important missions like Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan. The rocket this time will launch 104 satellites, multiple satellites in multiple orbits. 88 nanosatellites, each weighing approximately 5 kilograms, called Dove satellites, belong to a US company called Planet. We've undertaken a minor Apollo project in this lab here in San Francisco and today we're on the verge of achieving it. It wasn't just for shits and giggles that we decided to get this daily mission, you know? It wasn't just because we wanted to break that record and have the largest number of satellites. All the world's major challenges from feeding everyone and world poverty to stopping climate change and all the rest, having daily images of the planet it was going to dramatically and substantively help those global challenges. There's a small but finite chance of this thing blowing up. What does it feel like when the launch blows up? Power to other phenomenal. Unfortunately, uh, I know that feeling uh, twice. Two times we've put our doves on the rocket and they didn't make it into space. So that was in Antares, but we lost 26 satellites. And on the SpaceX, that was going to the space station, we had eight satellites in that as well. Namaskar, good morning and greetings to all our viewers. I welcome you to this launch event. Well, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, too. We need this. It's yep. a red time. Yep. It's a lot of momentum building. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, plus one, two, three, four, five, In the satellite business, it's not enough for the rocket to get to space. Planet needs its 88 doves in orbit. That takes 17 agonizing minutes as the rocket accelerates to 21 times the speed of sound toward Antarctica and past the reach of any tracking station built by humans. When it reappears, the doves will, or won't, be flying. Heat shields separated.
I'm determined, I and mean, I think many other people are determined as well, to realize a commercial space economy. Third stage separated. You will have the space economy integrating with the terrestrial economy in a way like it never did before. When that happens, which is like within our lifetime, it'll be one of the watershed moments of humanity. I mean, this is up there like the discovery of fire or evolution's greatest hits. Injection conditions normal. So the orbit has been achieved. About six minutes, there will be no signal from the vehicle. When you get this thing working, the movement will continue to build around a transparent planet. Plus 17 minutes. Nano satellite separations have started. Pick the phenomenon that you want to track. This new data set that we have that's so valuable and comes to us from above the clouds. Separation of all 104 satellites confirmed. Now the mission has been accomplished. Planet now operates the largest satellite fleet in history. There's no way that anyone can scan their planet on a daily basis like we can now. No one can.